So I have a bit of a problem and uh, it's kind of an embarrassing one that involves feet. I have several feet and, 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 and specifically I have feet for antique and vintage Singer sewing machines. I have eight ruffler feet, guys. I have eight. I don't need eight, I have eight. So I have a problem, okay? I have enough sewing machine feet to basically start an OnlyFans with them. You would think I would use them all the time, right? You think I would just be out here sewing all sorts of good stuff with my vintage Singer sewing machine feet and my vintage Singer machines. And the reality is, is that it, I don't. And that's a problem we're gonna rectify today because one of the reasons why I don't use these things is because I don't know how. Going back, if you watched my history of the sewing machine video, which I highly recommend that you do if you haven't already because it's literally one of my favorite videos I've ever made for this channel. You'll have watched me fix up and restore my 1898 Singer Vibrating Shuttle Model Number 27 machine. And when I bought that machine, not only did it come with its own machine manual, and it's beautiful and like in great condition and has a bunch of parts. It also came with a box of attachments and the manual on how to use the attachments. When I opened up this box, I didn't know what to expect, but it is actually essentially complete. Nowadays, we call this the puzzle box. Um, it wasn't called that in the 1800s. It was just called the attachment box, but it is just the most adorable, ingenious little invention. Um, this was actually patented in 1889 by the Singer Sewing Machine Company, and it comes with all sorts of different feet. Hem feet, a bias tape foot, a quilting guide ruler. It comes with a ruffler, because that's what I need more of. A hem tuck foot, bobbins. It also came with an underbraider, some screwdrivers, guides, and things like that. So I thought what could be super duper fun today is we go through the attachments here and we give them a try and we just kind of see how they work. Now, with that being said, I also have one more foot that I want to try. I keep calling it the edger, which is embarrassing, um, but it's called the edge, edge stitcher foot. I have had this foot. I had no idea how it really worked, but I found instructions online. We'll give these a shot and see how they work and see what I like or don't like about them or if they make me cry because you never know. So then that way I don't have this embarrassing large collection of sewing machine feet that I don't use. I have sewing machine feet that I now know how to use, which is very exciting. So with that, let's take our box of feet, our instructions, and let's get to work. the folded edge under the spring on the marking plate with the part that is to be tucked on top. Draw to the right until the edge comes against the gauge. My tension wasn't great in the start, but that happens. But there's a line from the foot to show where I'm supposed to fold it next. So let's see. Okay, so maybe we wanna do really tiny pin tucks, like an eighth of an inch. Okay, like, it took me a minute to figure it out, but it definitely works. And like, I'm able to get just the tiniest, tiniest, like, pin tucks. That's amazing. Like, that's just incredible. Wow, okay, cool. So, tucker foot, 10 out of 10. Takes a minute, takes a minute to learn how to work it, but it definitely is noise. Let's see if we can get this ruffler foot to work, huh? So it says, remove the pressure attached to place connecting the lever with the needle clamp as shown in the illustration. Got it. Place the goods to be ruffled between the lower or separator plate and the ruffling blade. Push forward until under the needle and lower the presser bar and proceed. Okay, well, that got a little rough start there. It didn't want to pull through, but it definitely uh, 
is a ruffler foot and it does what ruffler feet do, which is make random tucks to create a ruffle effect. Uh, never as nice as if you do it by hand, but you know what? Who cares, right? We're gonna do under braiding now because that sounds like fun. The first thing I need to do is I need to put the under braider plate into place. So I need to both screw this into the hole, but I also need to like get this in the guide to start. Ha ha, yes. Okay, now I need to make sure I use the right freaking foot. Pattern or design to be braided must be stamped or traced on the wrong side of the goods. So we're stitching this from upside down. I don't have a design. We're just gonna vibe. Uh oh, I don't think you're supposed to be like that. I think you're supposed to be like that. Hey, but it's working though. It's working. <laughs> it's not perfect, but I made a sad balloon with my under braider. Look at that. That's amazing. That's, re that's really exciting. I'm very excited about that. That's really cool. So let's try the hem foot. This, this is the hem foot and then this screws into place. I'm gonna do a really wide hem. Substitute the hammer foot for the ordinary presser foot and attach the wide hammer to it as shown above, done. Press the hammer down upon the bed of the machine. Enter the edge of the cloth into the hammer and draw it back and forth until the hem is formed, stopping with the end under the needle. Okay, just wiggle it. These fussy things. I gotta be honest, I, I have the hardest time with hemming feet because in theory, they're great. In practice, they're a pain in the butt. I do like how their instructions are like, wiggle it back and forth, just make it work. And you're like, well, I mean, it's a vibe. All right, technically it's working. Is it working well? I don't know. I gotta be honest, that worked better than I thought it would and it works better than normal hem feet do. Cause when I ran out of room, it's when it stopped. But if you look here, it actually looks pretty good. You're better than I thought you'd be. Mm -hmm. So I've read over the instructions for the edge stitch foot, lovingly called the edger by me and my broke brain. So it actually can do multiple different applications, but the one that I was really particularly interested in was the fact that this foot can basically do insertion lace. Each slot has an, a number that corresponds with it and it has a, di a, a diagram. So. I need to put the lace in slots one and four for them to be stitched basically on top of each other. So, okay, so number four should go in first. Number one lays on top of number four. Ooh, that is cool, okay. Oh, wow. Victorian technology, am I right? Let's go, baby. Okay, I feel, I feel like a little kid, like, wow! <laughs> a Zeppelin, that's mine! 
I want to try something. So I think it's the same approach. The edge of the material is folded and placed in slot number one, and the lace is placed in slot number four. Okay, so we don't need to fold it because this has a really nice selvage. So we're just gonna do that. And yeah, we just need to make sure that it stays on top. That is incredible. Okay, I did much better that time than I did with the lace. I still missed a couple spots, but not too terrible. Incredibly precise. Gobsmacked. Gobsmacked. You. Man. Incredible. So that was a lot more fun than I expected and the results were so much better than I anticipated too. I'm having a hard time picking my favorite because quite genuinely all of the feet performed better than I thought they would. So definitely my top three are gonna be the pin tuck, the under braider stitcher, and the edge stitcher. They take down like this intimidation barrier or like this, oh, it's gonna be like so much work because, oh, I'm gonna have to hand stitch all of this or, oh, you know, like it, it all of a sudden just makes it a faster project and something that can go more quickly. And so I can invest more time and energy in doing something faster and getting that creative satisfaction without having the tediousness of it all, if that makes sense. So when it comes to the edge stitcher and the under braider, that's where I think they really shine. Both feet were incredible. They both did amazing precision work. There is definitely a bigger, I think, user learning curve on the edge stitcher than there is with the under braider. If you are someone who is interested in getting feet, they're all over eBay, they're all over Etsy. The prices I think are a little high online, as is most vintage and antiques things. There's always a bit of a higher markup in my opinion online, just because when you're specifically searching for something, the seller knows that. Where if you're at an antique store or a flea market or a uh, outdoor antique fair, like you can find feet like this in boxes for like a couple bucks. Now, the one other piece of advice that I have for you all about feet is that not all feet go with the machines. So what we use today was obviously Singer and Singer feet, but I actually have machines that are not Singers and they also have special attachments and special feet, but they do not cross mingle. So my, it's a Wilcox and Gibbs chain stitch machine. It has feet accessories. I don't have them, but I know from the manual that it has accessories. Those accessories do not mix with the Singer accessories. I have a hand crank machine that's also a different type of presser foot mechanism and I have accessories for that machine as well. Again, they do not cross pollinate. So you do need to be careful when it comes to shank, uh, low shank, normal shank type of thing, but also brands as well, especially when you're dealing with vintage. Or if you're buying something that you don't really know the brand for, it might be a little difficult, but if you're buying a Singer, you should be fine. So I highly recommend it because these machines are workhorses. They can sew through basically anything. And you guys saw the precision of what we were able to accomplish with lace. It's just incredible. So with that, I do hope you all enjoyed this video. I had a really good time making this one, even though it's a bit of a dreary and rainy day. Let me know which foot is your favorite in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. And with that, my friends, I'll see you back here next time with another video. Bye.